but yeah, no, I've enjoyed it at Culloden. And uh, sorry to be leaving. You know, we had a good time. I mean, we went to um, Fort George, uh, the Urquhart Castle, the Culloden Battlefield. Glen Affric was good. We'll just going to take a few shots going down the A9, we like the A9, but I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like. But uh, you've seen motorway before. So we'll catch up with you a little bit later. I well, just want to add, um, we've had some really good responses to our tour, um, lots of kind comments. So thank you to everyone who's subscribed and has watched our journey. What's, it, what's the word? Vicariously. Um, a lot of people struggling with these times and uh, hopefully some of this this journey has helped this is the summit isn't it Schlock, Schlock the summit something like that near Dalwini slow down for the single carriage road Distillery. Not a bad little little stop. Okay, just outside Dalwini, heading south. It's quite big. Looks like they're building uh, the dual, dual carriageway. Um, where are we now, though? Can't even think where we are. But, um, uh, just we've gone past Dunkel, haven't we? Yeah. And um, we're north of Perth. Yeah, and it says that they're building dual carriageway all the way to. Well, I don't. I, I thought it said Dalwini, but Dalwini, I only saw yeah. it out the corner of my eye. Yeah, I yeah. suppose. Supposing they're intending to dual carriage it all the way, so yeah, got quite a task, haven't they? Big job, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 Going down the M90, aren't we? Think so we've been diverted down the M90. Some roadworks on the A9. No, so this is sat nag. So this would say half an hour, didn't she? Yeah, 30, 30 minutes. So I thought, well, okay. Yeah. Area, 
right, so it's very similar to a caravan club that you go and choose your pitch and uh, come back and let them know. It's a one-way system round the site. There's a lot of uh, leaves down. <laughs> and it's raining. Yeah. And we're looking for gonna go find the motor home service point, point first. Yeah, so we've come in here. Assume we go, we go left here. Yeah, we go to left here. It's quite, quite an open site, isn't it? It's quite a big site as well. Yeah. I'll show you the map here. Yes, yeah, so I think that's toilet block A over there. Yeah. And it's past that. And oh, <laughs> not in that way there. Toilet block A, so I think the motor home service point's in there somehow. We all right going this way? And through all the uh, statics? I presume so. So now with a digger there. Big sitting car park, it's so it can't get up there. Because he's got all stuff all over the road. <sighs> Can't go that way. Map's a little bit confusing. Motorhome service points. So, is it in there? Is that we there like that? Yeah. I think it's in here. Railway stone, the motor railway stone, and it's a, a drain. It's a drain, it'll do. I'll have to use my pipe to get in there. But We have to use Alan, like Alan keys, to turn to the water. But there's no way I can get in there unless I use my collapse waste pipes. That seems to work okay. So chemical. Emptying points in here. I'm saying that it's not the best I've ever seen, but unusually it uses hot water. Yeah, just chatting to the uh, the guy here about the waste disposal. They say they're putting in uh, grids for the motorhome disposal point. You know, having a long grid that you can just drive over, which should make life a bit easier. Mm -hmm. It's a good job I brought me collapse waste pipes in the description below. <laughs> Not far from the reception here. That's the hook up. Yeah, just started going forwards. It's quite a nice reception in there. They've got a few bits and pieces in there and you know, some a few provisions. Yeah. Like posh reception. Don't know. Is the restaurant's not attached to this, is it? It's just no, it happens no, to be here. It just happens to be here. But... Closed. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the entrance. We're just gonna have a little walk up the path and see where it takes us. Come on, go and have a little wonder. Yeah, so it's the Scottish SP SPCA National Wildlife Rescue Centre up here. And a very unusual looking building there. That's an old town. Yeah. Oh. It's over the moon. It's an old Very tower. astute. <laughs> yeah, so it says Sorchi Tower. It says in 1321 King Robert the Bruce granted the lands of Sorchi to Henry the D. Anand, the Sheriff of Clackmannan, 
uh, Mary de Anand, his descendant, married Sir James Shaw of Greenock about 1412, and he built the tower soon after their marriage. One of the most influential families in medieval Scotland. And in 1460, Sir James' son became governor of Stirling Castle. Oh. Right, that's a weighty old thing, isn't it? I think more modern windows there might help. <laughs> yeah, it might not be so dark in there. Oh, it's all bricked up. Can't get in there by the looks no, of it. No. it. Looks like they don't want you to get in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> your ride in centre. Yeah. Probably seen something. She is. Really, pull when she wants to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the wildlife rescue centre. I can just about see some geese, I think, in there. Maybe that's what Poppy saw. Yeah. 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 It's a cheap second-hand caravan. <laughs> Just to try it out, you know. <laughs> Go on, Poppy. I found a little lane here. It might be nice to take Poppy for a walk down here. Come on, then. Takes us to this, I assume this is an old bridge over the railway. That looks like that was an old railway. So presumably you can walk along there. Perhaps we can explore that a bit more in the morning, Pops. Right, isn't it? This takes us back to the site because I can see the sign. This it is. Yeah, Battle of Bannockburn. So where do we go then? Because we're not we're not Arriving a coach. at Bannockburn Heritage Centre on the right. Oh, flash. My headlights then for some reason. Oh, I remember this. Centre itself is closed, isn't it? Well, you couldn't book it online, so I'm assuming that it's closed, although there seems to be people moving around in it. Oh, right, might be able to go in there. But you can't book, you've got to book it online. Yeah, you've got to, yeah, but it said you couldn't. Yeah, the massive um, visitor centre car park, and that's the visitor centre. We didn't realise you could, we could go in, couldn't we? But I uh, can't take Poppy and I can't film anything. No. So it's a bit like Culloden. Yeah, that's uh, right. Don't know what, what sort of video that makes for. But uh, from what I remember, there were like interactive displays, weren't they? They had that's like right. a war game in there. They had a war game. We were in there for quite a while, weren't we? Yeah. You were either um, on the English army or you were in the Scottish yeah. army. Yeah, and we made a dreadful mess of it. We did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. think we were of the Scottish Army, we managed to lose. I think so. something <laughs> like that, yeah. I doubt that they do that at the moment, because that was a big group of us in there, wasn't it? Yeah. It was sort of like lecture theatre thing. Yeah. So we'll have a walk up to the monument. We will, we'll pop yeah, Eventually, if we can get Poppy to move. There's some stuff outside here. Yeah, yeah and there's some boards and things. We'll have a look at yeah, so it says the Battle of Bannockburn was fought on two days over the 23rd and 24th of June, 1314, one of the most significant moments in Scottish history, led by King Robert Bruce and the English King Edward II, Bannockburn became the most unlikely victory against heavy odds for the Scottish. So the English army numbered 20,000, Yeah. and they arrived at the scene of the battle exhausted after a gruelling march from Berwick 
contrast, the Scots army under Robert the Bruce was 8,000 in numbers. Scots had been training for weeks, learning to form shiltrons. And the landscape around Bannockburn changed dramatically since the Battle of 1314. Well, that's a, a map based on the academic panel and Stirling University. So it's quite a nice uh, timeline here. So 1274, Robert the Bruce, the future King of Scots, is born. 1296, Edward II invades Scotland and removes John Balliol from the throne. 1297, William Wallace and Andrew Murray win the Battle of Stirling Bridge. 1298, William Wallace is defeated at the Battle of Falkirk. 1306, Robert Bruce murders John Comyn and is crowned King of Scots, as you do. Edward II announces an invasion for the following summer. And in May, Edward Bruce gets agreement that Stirling Castle will surrender at midsummer if not relieved by the English. 23rd of June, Henry de Bone charges at Robert Bruce who kills him with his axe. The English vanguard is driven off. A detachment of English cavalry try to reach Stirling Castle but are intercepted. Edward II's army crosses Bannockburn and camp on the Cars, which is up there presumably. The Scots break cover and march towards the English army. The Scottish Shilterns advance and drive the English cavalry back. King Robert's army rout the English archers. Scottish spearmen triumph in fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting. And the English army breaks ranks and Edward II flees. Which leads to, in 1320, the Declaration of Arbroath proclaimed Scotland's right to freedom. And in 1328, the Treaty of Scotland recognises Scottish independence. Treaty of Edinburgh. And in 1328, the Treaty of Edinburgh recognises Scottish independence. Um, and then going down here, it says in 1787, Robert Burns visits the battlefield and later composes Scots Waha. <laughs> The National Trust for Scotland acquires this site in 1943 and in 2014 the 700th anniversary of the battle and the battlefield monuments are conserved. That's where we're going. Yeah, so what we've got here is a medieval psychic garden. So you see plants have always been a vital commodity. During the medieval period, peasants survived by growing useful plants and herbs which could be used for trade. And obviously, plants have had medicinal purposes and for healing as well. So that's what this is. Not a duck. Mm. I think you could do with a bit of attention. Are you coming in? Like dandelions here. They're how medicinal dandelions are, I suppose they are, aren't they? Probably was more interesting the smells outside. Yeah. And so anyone who knows anything about plants, can you tell me what any of these are? So I have no idea. Yeah. It looks a little bit like heather there, but I don't think it is. Okay, this way. Quite an impressive structure, isn't it? Got a big flagpole up there. Northern lights, northern lights and scilla tides, small folk playing your part, sorry, small folk playing our part, come all ye, the country says, you win me who take me most to heart. 
So for God and St Andrew, Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, planted his standard near this spot when the Scottish Patriots under his command vanquished the army of Edward II of England at the Battle of Bannockburn, 24th of June, 1314. We fight not for glory, nor for wealth, nor honour, but only and alone. We fight for freedom, which no good man surrenders, but with his life. Robert the Bruce, King of Scots, 1306 to 1329. That is a Big statue, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, he didn't look so much of an age, did he? 1306. Yeah, well, that's when he ruled, isn't it? I think that's when he was. Or was it an old fight? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out later. No, you're right, because it's 12 something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a view up here. It says, Her Majesty the Queen, accompanied by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, unveiled this statue of Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, on the 24th of June, 1964, the 650th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn. Sculptor was C. D. O. Pilkinson Jackson. Uh, and we just got back in time for the rain. Oh, a doom bar. <laughs> she's not allowed to say what sort of lager she's drinking. No. So it's not posh lager, no, is it? No. no, it's not. There's a do's and don'ts on the COVID front, usual sort of thing. Uh, closing off parts of the washing up uh, area. Use hand sanitizers, avoid toilets at peak times, and use your own facilities where possible. Wash your hands, limit the number of people. You in for citizens, receptions, toilet blocks will be closed twice a day for cleaning and intermittently throughout the day. Uh, there's a whole thing about uh, welcome to the woods. And if you wish to book a table at the woodsman, they've got a number there. Uh, vacate your pitch by 12 noon. Maximum one car. Can't, can't erect flags, pennants, or washing lines or wind socks. Yeah. You didn't bring your windsock, didn't you? Yeah. It says can't use hose pipe. Hose pipes are not to be used at any time. I assume that means for washing cars. Yeah. Uh, one way system. Recycling points. They don't allow fire pits. Keep your dog on a lead. There is Wi Fi. And you'll be asked for credit card details. It doesn't say how much the Wi Fi is. And to be honest, I didn't, I, <laughs> I didn't remember how much it was uh, the whole site. So I might update that later when I find out. Yeah, so that's it for our little uh, um, arriving at the woods. So if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and we'll catch up with you soon.